So wealth building your money, building your wealth is something that I believe like we're all trying to work on, right? We're all trying to figure out the best way. We're all trying to figure out the new innovative ways um, with what's going on in the economy. It's kind of one of those times where we're like, okay, what, what happens? So this is really just the basic building blocks of wealth building. We are not getting into specific strategies or um, investment strategies or anything like that. It's really just the basics, but let's jump in. So living first, you always have to determine what your financial needs are on an ongoing basis. So what is your budget? What would it take for you to live comfortably every single month? How have your bills met every month? And don't forget your taxes. You always have to pay those too. Um, income received is subject to income tax, which can be significant. And this will cut into what you do have time to invest with. Let me get rid of this banner so you can see the bottom. This is the first step you would take in creating your budget. So as a budget tool that I like to suggest for if you ha have not created a budget, um, I use Mint, like Mint.com. It's an app on your phone as well. I think it's a great free tool um, for people to use to create a budget, keep track of their money, and really start to, to determine what they need to live. And they do have a budget software tied into it, um, so you can write down your budget. And then it, it just loads on your phone, and it's, you know, green's good, yellow's good. And it comes to the end of the budget, and red's your past your budget. So it's a very simple tool to use. It's very simple app to use, too. <laughs> yeah, what we talked about in one of our uh, trainings, Megan actually had our entire team download and do it and something that I've used. So it's actually a great tool and it's very easy to use. So mm -hmm. if you want more, or want more information about it, let us know too. Yeah. That's not like we don't get paid to promote it or no, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> it's literally something I've been using since college around the time when it came out. And um, it's just helped me just learn about money, where my money is going, creating a budget and stuff like that. And, and creating a budget in like the new age, not like mm -hmm. having to take cash out um, or trying to figure out what's going on. Like we get to actually use our cards, be able to see where the money is going. And it, it's right. a pretty cool tool and it's free. That's what I like about it too. So it's free. So I can, it's definitely different than an Excel sheet that I used to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very different than Excel. So to live, begin your wealth building by finding a way to generate the income that you need to live comfortably. And you can accomplish this by working for someone else or yourself. So um, whatever you're doing right now, you can, you know, either way, do it, doing, um, creating a budget that works for you. This is just the first foundational step of what it takes to build wealth. You have to know that you're spending less than you are making so that you can actually start taking the money that you are making, the extra money, and start to replace yourself, replace your income by um, investing. So, the next is to replace your income based on the hours worked with the income that is automatic. So to create a passive income flow, what is passive passive income? So that's income that's coming to you without you having to spend hours working on something like coming to work or in your business. If you're, you're a consultant or something or a real estate investor, you actually showing up. So passive income looks kind of like rental income, no income. You could potentially invest in private companies that can be passive income as well. Um, so it's really what what you're familiar with. And that's one of the benefits of investing with a self-directed IRA because you get to choose what you what you want um, to invest with. And so um, this is the second step of the philosophy of wealth building is replacing your actual income. So this must actually equal or exceed cur your current working income. And requires this. The goal is that it requires much less less effort to maintain. Once in a place, you're financially independent. You can quit your job, free up time to truly start wealth building. Um, and we say this, but I want to say it in a, in an also lighter term that you don't have to quit your job. I I feel like we talk when we talk about wealth building, we talk about people always leaving their jobs and either. Um, having so much passive income that they don't work. They just continue to invest, which is great. That's some people's life. Some people love what they do and some people love working and have the ability to actually create a, a second stream of passive income while they work and just continue growing that that um, nest egg where they are able to build generational wealth forever. So the passive income does equal financially independent. 
Now, the third part of philosophy wealth building is to actually build. So building, there are three forms of income when you're building immediate income, which is like your present income, your cash flow over time and your future cash. Once you have achieved a cash flow, which meets your monthly needs, each additional dollar is taxed, leaving only the after tax amount to invest. One of the best ways to build at this point is to use your IRA to invest in real estate, promissory notes, um, pr uh, private placements, and all other forms of assets. If this is a Roth IRA, so if you're investing in a Roth IRA, then qualified distributions will never be taxed again. Um, if you've missed our, some of our other lives, a Roth IRA is where you pay taxes on the seed, but not the tree. So you're, you're getting taxed current year, but you continuously get to build and invest and use that money over and over and over again for it to be this big tree. And you don't get taxed on the big tree because you already paid taxes. The IRS is not worried about you having to pay taxes later down the road. They got their money, they're good. And so now you get to build that freely and, and take a distribution once you're 59 and a half, or um, if you had the, the Roth IRA open for five years, whichever comes later, but the Roth IRA is a great way to invest. Roth IRA is one of my favorite accounts. I have my money in a Roth. And the reason being because the goal is to always make more money and retire with more money than I'm making currently. So that's that's why um, it's super important to, to start actually building your income during um, the wealth building phase. Yes, and I did wanna bring up if you are not eligible for a Roth account, we do have options that you can do with the conversion with opening a traditional and going that route if you're wanting to, that is a taxable event. But if you have want more information about that, because there are income limits for a Roth IRA. So keep that in mind. But please, if you have any questions, let us know. It looks like we might have a question. Yes. And it's called a backdoor conversion. Yes. Um, so then the to continue to build, so the structure investments to produce minimal additional immediate income, seek to keep additional investment dollars tax deferred if possible and current tax income tax advantage. This is a lot of tax information. Mm -hmm. I understand that we aren't CPAs. You always want to make sure you're talking to your CPA or financial planner, accountant, when it comes to what taxes work for you and how you can tax shelter the most of your money or more money, you know, tax shelter, the more money, more possible right. possibilities for you to invest. So, um, so this, um, I, I will get to your question about sets. So the, um, structuring your investments, they could produce like the minimal additional media income that will be taxed. Rather, you will seek to keep the money invested, tax deferred if possible in any income. Okay, I said this, just wanna make sure. I wrote notes for myself, guys. I got a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we presented this one. So capitalism works. You always give people more than you take. And the reason that giving people more, that or giving people more than you actually take is why capitalism works. Um, and the current society and how I feel like it's getting looked at now, capitalism is getting looked at as evil. And the reason it's getting looked at as evil is because people are taking more than they give. So um, when we break it down, what real capitalism is, is giving and then taking less than you give. So it's a, it, it works in an essence, except it doesn't work when people get greedy. So right. <laughs> I'll just say that. So the absence of cohesion, cor I can never say that word, cohesion. People always get more than they give up el or else they wouldn't do the deal. Nobody wants to do a deal and be in the in the red or, or lose money in a deal. So that's the reason why it doesn't work when people get greedy with capitalism. You have to give more than you take. So high income does not equal rich. This is something we have been programmed to believe that if you are rich, then you are wealthy. Or if you have, if like a doctor, a doctor, you know, we have this idea that doctors make a ton of money and so they're rich, but realistically they're not, they're not building wealth many times. Many times they're, they're um, don't have their budget under control. They are living still paycheck to paycheck, just at a higher income area and a higher income rate. So, um, rich to, rich is not always or high income is not always rich. I like to say wealthy. I feel like rich still gives yeah. a term of like I do like that. <laughs> like you're living that rich life and it's like spending spending just as much as you make. And that's not the goal. The goal is to become wealthy in a sense where you can actually accumulate assets so that you can build wealth, generational wealth. 